Welcome everyone to the Osteoarthritis Action Alliance Lunch and Learn webinar for October 18th, 2017. Thank you for joining our presentation this month. Our presenter today is Serena Wiesner. She's a gerontologist dedicated to helping communities and organizations support healthy aging through evidence-based programs and services. And with that, I'll let her take it away. Welcome, Ms. Wiesner. Thanks, Allison. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Okay, great, thanks. I'm using a headset and you just never know when it might conk out. So I just wanna echo Allison's welcome to everyone. Thanks for taking some time out of your busy days to join us here for um, a brief, but hopefully a very informative half hour. Um, we're going to be discussing uh, arthritis appropriate evidence-based interventions. <clears throat> This is just a brief overview of, of what I will be discussing during the Lunch and Learn today. I'm going to start off with just a brief review of the impact of arthritis. I think that it's really important to just touch on this even briefly today um, because it really uh, kind of drives home the importance of doing programs in your communities, implementing programs in your communities that can help people with osteoarthritis lead happier, healthier, more productive lives. So I'm going to briefly go over some of that. And then I'm just going to give you basically some snapshots of CDC's recommended um, arthritis appropriate or arthritis associated evidence-based interventions. And these fall into two categories, self-management programs and physical activity programs. And I know that we're not going to have a whole lot of time to delve into each of the programs today. So in each of the slides, you'll see there is a link on each of them, and you will have access to this webinar after um, today's Lunch and Learn so that you can um, explore those programs more thoroughly. And then I'm also going to share some resources so that you can um, kind of figure out the programs that are going to work for you in your communities and then um, have some tools and resources to actually go ahead and implement those programs. And then as Allison mentioned, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So this right here is um, an infographic from the CDC that shows the five most common and serious types of arthritis. As many of you on the phone probably know, there are hundreds of different types of arthritis, but these right here are the ones that impact um, the greatest number of individuals. And you can see there in the blue circle that osteoarthritis impacts 27 million um, people in the U.S. today. And of course, um, the impacts of our osteoarthritis go way beyond um, you know, joint health and um, pain, but they also have a significant impact on quality of life. In this infographic from the OA Action Alliance, you can see that people with OA um, have lost work earnings um, to the tune of about $80 billion. Um, they have a limit in their usual activities due to arthritis. They have difficulty doing things like walking up and down stairs, um, bending down, stooping, etc. <clears throat> there are significant medical costs associated with treating osteoarthritis. Uh, about $2,000, just over $2,000 on average per person per year. And then this is something you can see in the bottom middle circle, um, something that we think about, or that we may not think about, is that it impacts veterans at a greater um, rate than those just everyday civilians. So one in three veterans is impacted by osteoarthritis. And then 40% of adults with arthritis are inactive. And inactivity, of course, makes it harder to maintain um, a healthy weight, makes it more difficult to manage other chronic conditions such as diabetes and heart disease, um, which then actually cause more difficulty with osteoarthritis. 
So unfortunately, there is no cure for osteoarthritis, but there are several ways to manage it. Uh, medications, surgery, and then non-drug treatments like physical therapy, occupational therapy, splints and assistive devices, patient education and support, which is primary to what we're going to be discussing today, and then, of course, weight loss. And at the bottom, you'll see, <clears throat> of course, the arthritis-associated evidence-based interventions, which is what we'll be talking about today. So in the National Public Health Agenda for Osteoarthritis in 2010, there were four interventions that were recommended. There were weight management, injury prevention, self-management education, and then physical activity. And it's the self-management education and physical activity that are truly addressed by the arthritis-appropriate evidence-based interventions. So this covers about half of those um, very important um, recommendations. So here we can see physical activity can decrease pain and improve physical function by about 40% and may reduce healthcare costs. But unfortunately, we know, we also know, that one in three adults with arthritis are inactive. So we know that physical activity can help them, but a number of people still remain inactive. And adults with arthritis can reduce their symptoms by participating in disease management education programs, such as those that I'm going to talk about. But only one, about every one in 10 have taken part in one of these programs. So we still have our work cut out for us in getting these programs out to the people who need them. Um, filling the gaps in our communities so that more people have access to these programs. And hopefully after our call today, if you are not um, implementing these programs, you will consider doing so in your communities or helping um, your partners to determine a way to do this. This is just a slide summarizing the programs that I'm going to review today. In the left side, you'll see there's physical activity programs. And those include active living every day, enhanced fitness, fit and strong, and walk with ease. And then on the right side is the self-management programs, arthritis self-management program and the chronic disease self-management program, and their Spanish um, versions as well. So again, I just want to remind you that I am just going to go over the recommended programs. Um, they also have CDC also has a list of promising programs, so that those are programs that aren't quite at the um, level of evidence and um, dissemination that those in uh, the, the recommended list are, but there is, there is that additional list. I do want to point out that all the programs today are evidence-based, and they can all be conducted in community settings. So community centers, senior centers, fitness centers, churches, those types of settings are all um, supportive of these programs. Let's first take a brief look at the self-management programs, chronic disease self-management program, and the arthritis self-management program, also known as CDSMP and ASMP. Now, these programs are indeed the self-management programs of, of the recommended programs. <clears throat> they are both community-based and group-based programs. They meet, both of them meet for two and a half hours once per week for six weeks, and they are led by two trained leaders, at least one of whom has a health condition. Uh, this program really emphasizes the importance of connecting with and learning from peers. And so it's a very important part of the program to have the leaders um, reflect the community in which they are holding the workshops and the people who are within their, their workshop. 
the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program and the Arthritis Self-Management Program both provide tools to help manage the symptoms related to their chronic conditions. CDSMP um, includes tools that are more broad for all ongoing health conditions. So it may be a workshop that includes people with diabetes, uh, heart disease, um, a number of other chronic health conditions, including arthritis. So it's a very diverse group, but they're all uh, addressing the same topics and learning the same tools or skills. So the topics include techniques to deal with chronic disease, appropriate ways to exercise, managing medications, communicating effectively with family, friends, and health professionals, nutrition or healthy eating strategies, and then evaluating any new treatments that they may that may be accessible to them to help them manage their chronic conditions. And what they have seen, what the research has shown with the CDSMP, is that participants show significant improvements in their exercise, their ability to do social and household activities. They have less depression, fear, and frustration, are less worried about their health, have reduced symptoms like pain, so that's important for those with arthritis, and they also have increased confidence in their ability to manage their condition. This program, CDSMP and the ASMP, were developed at the Stanford Patient Education Research Center. Um, and it has actually been transitioned off of the Stanford campus to the Self-Management Resource Center. So please, if you're wanting to look up more information on this, look up the Self-Management Resource Center. So there are, there are Spanish versions of both of these programs. You can see here that the Spanish language version of CDSMP is called Tomando Control de Su Salud. And it is actually um, a, a Spanish equivalent, but not a direct translation of CDSMP. So this really was um, redeveloped or revised in order to be culturally appropriate for those whose primary language is Spanish. There's also the online version. It's called Better Choices, Better Health. And then down below here, you can see that um, Arthritis Self-Management Program, and it really, the tools that are addressed in ASMP are very similar to CDSMP, but um, it obviously has a much greater focus on arthritis specifically. Both of the programs have um, an accompanying workbook and a uh, CD, a relax the relaxation CD that go along with them. Now, if you are interested in adopting one of these programs in your community, I do want to let you know that they have kind of um, are no longer actively disseminating the arthritis self-management program. So if you don't have a direct link with someone who is already implementing or an organization that's already implementing arthritis self-management program, then you would want to focus your efforts on adopting the CDSMP instead because they are no longer um, offering licenses specifically for the arthritis self-management program. So let's move now into the physical activity programs. And these include active living every day, enhanced fitness, fit and strong, and walk with ease. Active Living Every Day was based on a research study at the Cooper Institute in Dallas, Texas. It is really a behavior change program that helps people identify and address the barriers to physical activity. It also helps people create realistic goals, develop a social support network, and then determine ways to recover from lapses in physical activity. It's really helping people who maybe have a hard time staying physically active. Um, so it's great for people who may have 
lead a sedentary lifestyle like many people with osteoarthritis. And this can help them kind of create those small changes, um, make goals for themselves to help incorporate physical activity into their everyday. It is a group-based program that takes place one hour per week for 12 or 20 weeks. The original program was developed to be a 20-week long program, so almost five months. Um, they did revise it and did additional evaluation on a 12-week version, and that was found to be um, also effective as the 20-week program. So when the participants meet, they do a combination of lecture and group discussion, but then all the physical activity is actually done outside of class. And each class is led by one trained leader, uh, you can see down on the row that says training requirement or training required. There is an online course that uh, people can take to become certified to lead the Active Living Everyday program. The program, although it was developed at the Cooper Institute, is being administered by Human Kinetics. And you can see the link at the bottom of the screen for additional information on this. Enhanced Fitness is the next program. This was developed at the University of Washington Health Promotion Research Center. We began evaluating this program in the early 90s, so it's been around for quite a while. Um, it helps people become more active, energized, and empowered to sustain independent lives. And although it was originally designed for older adults, it's very appropriate for the general population and people of all fitness levels. It is actually a group-based program where the physical activity happens in the group-based setting. So unlike ALED, Active Living Every Day, uh, the physical activity is actually the main part of the group-based work. The group meets one hour per week for three times per week, and it actually meets on an ongoing basis, so it is not a time-limited uh, program. It, too, is led by uh, one instructor, and much like ALED, that instructor does need to attend a training. The enhanced fitness training is done in person, and it's about a day and a half in length. Enhanced fitness uh, really covers a gamut of exercise, so it includes the warm-up, aerobic, strength training, stretching, and cool down, and it does incorporate some balance exercises throughout. The program is administered by Sound Generations, which is formerly Senior Services of Seattle, so you can find out more information about enhanced fitness through the link at the bottom. Fit and Strong is the next program we're going to go over. This one was developed at the University of Illinois at Chicago Institute for Health Research and Policy. It was developed for sedentary older adults who are experiencing lower extremity joint pain and stiffness. Um, but even those who are not, are not experiencing OA or that pain and stiffness, um, can certainly participate in the class. Like Enhanced Fitness, this program does incorporate the physical activity in the actual workshop, and it also has a health education component so that people can learn more about osteoarthritis and self-management and behavior change skills. So about 60, 60 minutes of each class is spent exercising, doing flexibility, strength training, and aerobic walking. Um, and then 30 minutes is dedicated to that health education portion. <clears throat> this program meets three times a week um, for eight weeks. And as I mentioned, it's 90 minutes. It, it has been shown to have a significant impact and improvement on those with osteoarthritis. <clears throat> Again, there is a, a training required for the leaders of this. 
Uh, it's currently an in-person, but I think they are just developing and will be releasing an online training for their instructors soon. For more information, you can see the website at the bottom. And the last program we're going to review is called Walk with Ease. This program, as is implied by the title, is a walking program. It's for people with arthritis, but also, again, like the other programs, I think it's great for people um, of all abilities and um, those without arthritis as well. It was originally developed by Terry Rizzo at the Stanford Health Improvement Center, but then was uh, revised and reworked, and additional research was completed on it right here at UNC's Thurston Arthritis Research Center. This program, like Fit and Strong, includes kind of the lecturette and behavior change process, as well as actual walking, including a warm-up and a cool-down as well. So like some of the other programs, there are pieces that talk about making those behavior changes, setting goals, um, and things like exercising safely and comfortably, specifically as it relates to walking. There are two different ways to implement Walk With Ease. There is the group-based group version, so that could be for 12 to 15 participants, and it meets once a, or three times a week for 60 minutes, and it's for about six weeks, for six weeks, I should say. And then there's the option to have the self-directed version. Um, in the self-directed, the participant receives the workbook, which is the same workbook that is given out in the group-based program. And they can follow along with the activities in the workbook kind of on their own time. There's also a, um, an online, uh, online tools to help support them throughout the self-directed version and an app that can help them. There's also the option to do kind of a, a hybrid model where people maybe meet to walk with a group, but then do the, the self-directed workbook activities on their own at home. And it looks like I forgot to include the link on this slide, so maybe I'll ask Allison if you could put that in the chat on the right-hand side. That would be great if you could look that up for me and put it in there. This is being um, ad, uh, administered by the Arthritis Foundation currently. And there is an online training for those who want to get trained as a leader in the Walk With Ease program. It's about a three to four hour online learning module. So I'm, I'm kind of coming to the end of our time. I'm going to cruise through these next couple slides here because I want to show you some of the resources. But I really wanted to encourage you, as you're thinking about these programs that uh, I have reviewed today, to find that sweet spot for the programs in your communities. And this may um, be something that you have already thought about and are already implementing, but it really can improve the success of your programming to think about not only what the program is, the community program, and uh, its format and its requirements, but also look at the needs of your community. If you have a community um, that is, has very limited mobility, um, you may want to start with, some, with the self-management program and then slowly add additional programs onto there. If you have a, pro, uh, a cohort that is very interested in physical activity and they all have lower extremity osteoarthritis, then Fit and Strong is probably going to be the best fit for you. But then in addition to that, you also need to think about funding and the mission of your organization. I did not go into the specifics of the costs of each of these programs because that can vary um, depending on your location and the size of your organization and how you want to go about disseminating it. But you should 
definitely think about uh, where you would get the funding, funding and how you would be able to sustain it and how it fits within your organization's mission. I also wanted to encourage you to think about creating a supportive path of evidence-based programs. You may want to adopt multiple programs or you already may already have some of these programs in your repertoire, but to think about some setting up something that supports your constituents along their self-management journey. They may want to start with the chronic disease self-management program, gain the confidence to better manage their health, and then they realize that perhaps they want to do more, incorporate more activity into their lives. So walk with ease might be a great next step for them. And then as they become more confident in their ability to walk and move safely, then fit and strong could be great for them to increase their strength and their flexibility. And since fit and strong is only a time limited program, then perhaps you want to adopt enhanced fitness since enhanced fitness is an ongoing program. And that could really help um, support them over the weeks and months and years to come. So begin thinking about that as uh, you develop your programs. I do want to make sure that you know about the OA Alliance's resource library. You can see the URL right here is OAA or oaaction.unc.edu. And then if you click on the resource library, that will lead you to a plethora of information that can help you when you actually begin to make the decision on what program is best for you. And then also go into the implementation of it and the marketing of your program. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of all the tools and resources that are on here. I don't expect you to, to read all this typing, but lots of resources available on those. You can also find out much more about all the programs that are reviewed on the CDC website. If you just search CDC um, arthritis program and look at their recommended programs, you can find one-pagers on each of the programs and summaries of each of the programs on the CDC website. So that is um, it for now. And I'll turn it over to Allison if you've got some questions that have been coming in. Thank you, Serena, for presenting today. That was a really thorough presentation. A few of the questions that I had myself were answered by the end, so that was fantastic. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give a minute for other people to type in some questions that they might have. Um, but and while we're waiting for that, I just want to give a brief announcement for our next webinar, which will be November 15th with Rebecca Hassan, who will be reviewing exercise interventions that work, um, a recent history of effective exercise prescription. And that will be coming off the coattails of our Obesity Week um, presentation, kind of building on that symposium. Um, and let's see, I think we have a question coming in. Um, but while it's going, I wanted to point out the slide that you had about creating a supportive path of evidence-based interventions. I think that's a great, um, almost like a tool to think about when you're planning which programs to implement. It's nice to know they can kind of build on each other in mm -hmm, that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if yeah. you, and oftentimes after people attend a class like, like CDSMP, one of the things that they will one of the goals that they will make for themselves is to walk more. That I used to lead the program. I was a master trainer for the program for many years, and that was by far the most common goal that people set for themselves. And if you have a program like Walk With Ease um, or even another physical activity program, it, it helps them kind of continue along with that goal that they've set for themselves. Great point. Looks like we have a question um, in the chat box. Okay. And why is the ASMP program no longer available? Right. Um, 
it is my understanding that because the CDSMP addresses so many of the same uh, tools and it shares the same tools that are shared within the arthritis self-management program, that it was just more efficient and more effective for them to kind of continue to support administratively the CDSMP versus the ASMP. The ASMP was actually um, kind of the, the foundation for all of the self-management programs developed at Stanford at the self management, the patient self-management education center. Um, so it really was, it provided the foundation for all the programs beyond there. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Hopefully that mm -hmm. answered your question. And um, so it looks like we are about reaching our time. Um, yes, so We'll be ending the webinar soon. If you have more questions, um, feel free to email Serena at that email. Um, go to our website, and the website's listed for more information. And uh, we hope that you tune in for our chat next month as well. Thank you again, Thanks, everyone. Thank you.